Welcome to the Flyman Fishing Show, where we talk fly fishing, fly tying, and everything in between. I'm your host, Scotty Davis. Can you hear me? No, dude. <laughs> yeah, what's happening? Dude, it took, I'm not the techiest dude, so it took me a minute to figure this thing out. Oh, this is my second ever Zoom call. <laughs> oh, okay, good. This is my first, so yeah. we, should be, we should be good by the end of this, huh? Very, Yeah, for sure. How Jeez. you been? Good, man. Busy. Super yeah. busy. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Well, cool. So uh, what's up? Oh, I got thrown into the role as a, as a podcast host here, so uh, it should be interesting. <laughs> I can't see us for hours, so yeah, uh, no, same here, same so here. So I figure I would do just a, a short introduction, and then we'll just get started, right? Yeah, yeah. sounds good. Cool. All right, our uh, guest today is Jesse Mails. He's a Florida native, a fly tire, a, a father a uh, photographer and a Costa Rican fishing guide. Uh, Good morning, Jesse. How are you today? Morning. I'm doing good, man. Good. good. Now, are you in Florida now or you're in Costa Rica? Oh, right now I'm in Costa Rica. Nice. Yeah. You spend uh, most of the year down there? I spend most of the year here. Yeah. We have the guiding business going, so that takes up a lot of time. Um, And then obviously we're trying to rebound here after the whole COVID scenario. So kind of keeping things in order and I do a lot of photo video work here. So that's been my bread and butter, obviously. Yeah. Has COVID been pretty bad in Costa Rica? Yeah, I mean, we, I had a group down in March of last year and um, we, right when COVID hit, so we, I was in the jungle for like a week. I didn't even know the country was locking down oh, wow. until we got back and we started getting all these phone calls and all this stuff and we had to get our guys out like the next day. And then yeah. since March, we canceled everything for last year um so now we do have some trips this month and we're starting to kind of book tours now for for this year and hopefully we stay open yeah yeah that's crazy jungle is probably the safest place to be definitely definitely not the united states at the moment it's uh Uh, there's no uh there's no covid in the jungle that's for sure yeah that's that's awesome uh and 506 outdoors for those of the Mm -hmm. people that don't know you it's the name of your guiding business there that's right Um, yeah and where in where in florida did you grow up Man, I grew up pretty much all over South Central Florida, yeah. um, from Miami up to Crystal River area. Nice. And then I spent about eight years um, in college in Orlando and met my wife there. Nice. And um, I had plans, obviously, to kind of move back around my brothers. They live in Crystal River on the coast. And, right. um, and then I ended up coming down here. So it was like kind of like a whirlwind. But how, I've been here now for about five years. And how'd you get started going there? Um, a number of different reasons, but, um, I had met a person who had, who been living down here and she had offered to host like some friends of mine to come down and check it out. And they had sort of like a good report. And personally for me, everything I do, man, like I'm a big Bible believing dude. Like I, I'm not a, I don't preach it on people, but for me, for my life, man, that's what I live by. And I just felt like immediately when I heard what they were saying, that that was for me. So I jumped on it and, um, me and my wife were able to make it work. So, um, and we've been super blessed, super fortunate down here. So I have nothing to complain about whatsoever. And you have uh, your son's now five. Is that right? Yeah. My son's five now. And then I have another one. My other one is about 10 months now. Oh, nice. He was a COVID baby born like right after the (laughs) lockdown here. So like, not much else to do <laughs> my wife for my poor wife man with her birth stories like yeah we, we had got to the hospital and it was like full lockdown mode and we we're like trying to have a baby <laughs> so your second child was born in costa rica yeah yeah nice. in costa rica that's cool so they get do they get dual citizenship i guess since you're still yeah they have citizen. dual citizenship and then i have per, like permanent residency here so i nice. could pretty much stay i don't have to go back and forth on a visa or anything man lucky kids Dude, I know, right? <laughs> Man, that's good. so they 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 dig it. Obviously, I saw some pictures on your Instagram page. He looks like a fishing oh, yeah. little kid for sure. Yeah, wow. dude, my kid, he like I mean, I tie a lot of flies, obviously. So yeah. like, he's always sitting there learning. Like, right. we just I've been doing little lessons with him on the vice, and he loves going down the river on the paddleboard. So that's like his new favorite thing to do. Yeah, and he can't really like the machaca fishing that we do is like pretty physically. You know, to hook those fish, it, like, takes a lot of power to stick them. So, like, right. I'll stick them and give them the rod, and he just reels them in. He loves it. So, it's that's cool. a machaca. That's a jungle fish? 
Yeah. Yeah, it's like the cousin cousin to a piranha. Nice. Um, and they're just super fun to catch. Yeah. And they, they live in beautiful places. So they eat flies pretty well. Yeah, they eat a number of different flies. Like they'll eat pretty much anything in the water given the situation, but they really like these fruit that fall from the trees. Hmm. So we make these little like fruit flies that right. we throw. So it's sort of like not very traditional in that sense, but right. you can catch them on clousers or like hopper patterns and stuff like that. But they pretty much eat anything falling out of the tree. Yeah. That's what he likes to do though, float in the river like oh, that. Dude, yeah, he yeah. loves it. Yeah, my son, uh, obviously, like probably you did too. I started him on bluegill. He's seven, uh -huh. uh, which is a little popper. But I actually found that he picked up the fly rod a lot easier than the little Zebcos. And my dad bought him. Uh, it's just a lot sure. less going on with it. Um, but it's just, it's been a, a fun ride watching them progress, you know. Now he's at the point where he likes the spinning rods. And I'm not a, I'm not that. Yeah you know you can fish however you want to fish as long as you're fishing exactly. so uh, but yeah For he's sure. he's digging it um so how how often are you in coaster are you either there year round now yeah man i'm pretty much like i think last year i spent 10 and a half to 11 months here and that's right. pro pretty much been the aside from work trips to the states i mean that's pretty much where i'm at yeah, yeah. nice um so what part of Costa Rica is it? Is, I know it's the obviously the yeah. jungle. Is it dead right. center? Or? Yeah, I live right maybe 30 minutes from the airport in San Jose, which is dead center in the country. And that's super good for me because we guide all over the country for right. jungle species, tarpon, billfish. Like we go everywhere. So it's really a good location for me. I can pick people up from the airport, stuff like that. Yeah. And right right there we just right up on a mountain overlooking the valley it's it's super oh, nice location i bet that's gorgeous um yeah. congrats on your recent article in tail magazine oh thanks uh, yeah for, the for those, yeah that was that was a really good read the photos were spectacular uh yeah, for those of you who haven't read it uncle tarpon mayhem and it's in the latest issue correct yeah the latest issue um and when most people most fly fishermen they think about tarpon obviously what's coming to mind is that sight fishing in in the right. keys or you know the bahamas tell, tell me a little bit how the jungle stuff is different man it's i grew up fishing tarpon in florida you know so right. like i know that traditional mindset of like you're thinking gin clear water you're seeing a line of tarpon from 150 yards and it, yeah. then you make a cast it's like it's all sort of like stoic in your mind but like down here you're fishing like dirty chocolate water the only fish you see are rolling fish or fish that are feeding like and and what was insane was quite often you'll see pods of tarpon sort of feeding like tuna on the surface like just a, attacking a bait ball yeah and tarpon flying out of the water and you pull up and you just dump cast into them um other than that you're pretty much pulling the boat up into the river mouth on the backside of the breakers and you dump like 80 foot of line out 60 to 80 feet and you use lead core to pull the fly down and you're fishing like 30 to 50 feet of water and you pretty much just drift the boat across the river mouth and you'll find that the top layer of the water about two meters is super dark but below that is gin clear so once you get that fly down in that clear water, they could see it really well. Huh. And you just come right through the zone and you start hooking up. And a lot of times you'll have, if you, you have multiple anglers on the boat, everybody's hooking up at the same time. So there's like three people hooked up, tarpon flying everywhere. Yeah. It's just, it's a really <laughs> unique sort of situation. So and it's, it's mayhem, not, basically. <laughs> yeah, it's really crazy. I'd never seen anything like it until we started kind of fishing these areas. And it just blew my mind, man. It yeah. was like, the, it was the craziest thing to see. So generally full sinking lines and. Yeah, yeah. we use um, like an intermediate line. And then if that's not getting down enough, we have like 15 to 20 foot sections of lead core that we put on and that'll pull it down. Yeah, that'll, the rest of the that'll pull it down. Yeah. Um, so that water clarity you said where it was darker water at the top, is that just the sediment coming from the rivers and the jungles coming down, making it like that? Exactly. Yeah. So the river, the rivers we fish, um, the main one is right up at the border of Nicaragua on the, on the Caribbean side. So it's a big river, man. And it's dumping all this chocolate water that's just coming out of the jungles. Yeah. And it's, it's just 
clay clay water you yeah. know so a ton of sediment and then it's just dumping into the ocean so like right where that meets man is just a mixture of everything nice are you throwing like bigger darker flies or to get yeah attention? giant flies like it i show people the flies like we fish my buddies in florida and they're like yeah that would never work you yeah. know just like eight to ten inch flies yeah. like six out hooks and you know it's it's a whole different game but yeah that's how it was here cool. the first tarpon in south carolina was caught by uh, raz reed i believe uh with fuzzy davis and they were fishing tw you know, 12 to 14 inch billfish flies dredging yeah. in offshore holes and finally got it exactly. done that's crazy uh yeah, what, what, what else do you find obviously you get big snook in the river as well yeah, there's good snook fishing certain times of year. It's a it's a it's a fishery that's been hammered, and yeah. even right now, like there's a lot of netting still going on, even though it's illegal here. Like it yeah. still happens. So that's and snook, you know, once they they eat those things, you know. Yeah. So sadly, they are delicious. They are delicious. For sure. <laughs> yeah. So that's a big problem with them is just over harvesting from from netting, but. Right. Other than that, you could definitely catch some big snook here. Is the tarpon a protected species there? Yeah, it's not protected. I mean, they they keep tarpon in certain remote villages here right. too, and they eat them. Right. Um, they make little like almost like a crab cake, but with with the tarpon meat on there. Yeah. And it's, it's I've had it. It's actually pretty good. I'm not yeah. gonna lie. I've seen it. But, like, um, scooping it off the skin with an ice cream scoop. The sooner, yeah, yeah looks... exactly. <laughs> Uh, yeah that's crazy it, it happens i mean but there's uh, honestly i've never seen the amount of tarp in in one area like like we have at, at these river mouths it's for miles and miles and you just see it uh, it's got to be the largest congregation of tarpon on the planet and i don't know how there hasn't been more like scientific studies and things done out here because i've never seen anything like even close to like that and they're um, large they're large generally larger oh, fish right fish, yeah. huge fish yeah i mean you'll every day i've fished you'll see 150 pound fish come flying oh, out of the water that's crazy i mean and you're you're catching 80 to 120s all day long like so majority of your clients are coming down or chasing tarpon yeah well we just start i didn't guide for tarpon for a long time because you know, when I first came here, I didn't have any connections. Right. So me and my buddy literally like just started running around. I think we went to an outdoor store here and bought a two man kayak <laughs> and would put it on the truck, look on Google Maps. Yeah. Think, oh, this might be a good spot and let's go. And like we've been kayak fishing our whole lives, paddling all day long is nothing for us. So like yeah. we just started going. And it's taken a while to like meet the right people in the areas, meet the right, our, our good business partner, Mark Evans owns an outdoor store here in San Jose. Um, just a killer fisherman, great dude. Yeah. And he helped us out with some connections on the tarpon side of life. And it just took a while to put it together to where we felt comfortable knowing when to bring people, what to do, you know? So yeah. we just started guiding for that um, this year, but we've taken, friends and things like that yeah. in, the, in the past and um but we guide mostly machaca fishing ocean kayak fishing and then we book marlin sailfish trips um but yeah yeah that was it. uh we kind of do everything bro to be honest yeah. with you. Like, <laughs> that's awesome that's the way to do it you know? um, and then between photo and video projects that i'm doing for other people it's like I'm everywhere all right. the time. It's yeah, crazy. if you're uh, unfamiliar with uh, any of Jesse's photography work, um, check out his YouTube channels, his backwater fly fishing. Um, and there's some great tutorials on flies in there. But the uh, I like the stories. That's that's just cool to hear people's yeah, yeah. first fish stories. You know, it's different different take on things. That, that was uh, really entertaining. But definitely want to talk to you about the offshore stuff. Um, sure. The I saw the, the tuna and the... The, the marlin pictures the marlin picture yeah. actually I, I had up on my my phone to because we will have <laughs> some people watching hopefully yeah yeah tell me tell me about the, that experience marlin and is is that ted nugent that's mark <laughs> evans <laughs> yeah that's mark and you know what marlin marlin fishing here is something that i've never obviously 
financially would have had the opportunity to do sure. as far as just going out and, you know, and booking a $10,000 trip and get it, going to catch a Marlin. Sure. But luckily having been here and constantly putting out so much media for my own, for backwater fly fishing and 506 outdoors, other companies here have saw all that and they're like, Hey, you know, come hang out with us or let's meet up or whatever. So we had gotten the opportunity through another friend of mine, a great fly angler named Jen, and she was going Marlin fishing here. And we jumped on the boat with her and got out Very for like cool. the craziest experience ever. Um, and it's insane because they have the fads, the seamounts here offshore, and you're, you're running 80 to 100 miles out and you're staying out there for three days. And it's just the craziest fishery. These, these fish are just constantly circling these fads chasing bait yeah. and blue marlin it's just insane numbers of fish that's, that's wild that and, those pictures look pretty large and now is it like were you like baiting and switching and yeah if you're if you're going for fly that's what they do they're gonna yeah. have they're gonna be have the attractors get the fish up and then last minute you're dumping a fly in there and it's crazy that rod looked pretty it's stiff crazy. was it a 16 weight or yeah they it depends you could do like it depends on the size of the fish, but a 14 to 16 weight is what you're looking at, yeah. you know, for sure. If you're catching sailfish, it's a different game, but the marlin are typically between 200, 300 pounds and which is great for the fly rod. Yeah. Um, I have, I've caught one here, you know, high four hundreds on a, on conventional, but it's to try and do one like that on a fly for me would just be like way too much. Like yeah. Yeah. 250 pounder is, is pretty nice. Manageable. And the yeah. tuna, the tuna, uh, I've, I've never caught a tuna on the fly, but I could imagine it would be like a pulling up on a false albacore school and just, yeah, you know, the, the tuna fishing is so crazy because we catch them in all different scenarios. Like you can catch tuna in the kayak 200 yards off the shore um and then you could get on a boat and go look for spinner dolphin schools like i just did uh december with my good friend ben from jackpot sports fishing we went out with him and we had just a crazy day like triple tail mahi tuna all on the fly like just it was insane but he got the call hey man there's spinner dolphin 10 miles away boom we fire up the engine and these these spinner dolphin are thousands of them on the surface and the yellowfin tuna essentially live with them all the time. They hunt together. So you'll have like your spinner dolphin on the surface and then a hundred foot down, you'll have thousands upon thousands of big yellowfin. Wow. So you'll pull up in front of whatever direction the, the dolphin are going. And once the dolphins start passing the boat, you get your, your bait out there or yeah. fly or whatever. And the tuna just come up instantly and eat it. And it's just like, fish after fish from 20 pounds to 80 pounds hmm. and they're just missiles man like you what, hook one and you don't do anything for like a few minutes because yeah. it's just it's what's doing that its like thing. on a kayak on the kayak we've caught crazy stuff off the kayaks like it's just the kayak fishing here is incredible um i just put up we just started a new tour in a new location and we just put up a crazy video we shot there in one day you know, that's the cool thing about most of the videos. We're not filming for like three weeks to do right. a video. It's like, this is what happened that day. Right, Here you right. go. Like, it's honest. And um, you can catch a tuna in the kayak pretty easily. Um, doing it from fly, you need to have the right condition. On fly, it needs to be right conditions. Like, just to cast from the kayaks yeah. is sort of a chore. But if you're throwing poppers and spinning gear, a lot of times, like I said, 200 yards offshore, working deep some deep water and you're going to find yellowfin tuna in there certain times of year, pretty much December through April is amazing for yeah. tuna fishing. Nice. And back to the jungle tarpon, is that that seasonal or is that year round fishery here? Yeah. So we found that it's, it's all based around weather patterns. Like we, we found the month of May, September and October are really the only months that we guide just because we can guarantee good weather and the fish right. are generally happy. Outside of that window, you could find yourself either not being able to get out the river mouth because the swell's so big or the fish just aren't cooperating. So we pretty much, we got just those three months out of the year here for the yeah. tarpon. And that kind of helps us provide a good service. And for booking, it's a lot easier to just focus on tarpon those months right. and everything else the yeah. remainder of the year. 
so the rest of the year when you're not doing jungle tarp and you're guiding in the river as mm -hmm. well and the kayak tours and all that obviously yeah the other thing we have that's very seasonal is the month of april we found this crazy spot to catch rainbow bass and it's in the middle of the jungle it's a pretty good sort of paddle to get up into this area and um there's a really cool our buddy will he's a, a costa rican guy his uncles have a little place to stay out there and it's just a super unique experience but we're only booking that in the month of april um based upon weather as well because if the water's too high up there all the fish are sort of up in the trees right but in april is sort of like low rain and they all come down into the lagoons and the rivers and it's it's ridiculous yeah i had a buddy that went there i think he went lake Arenal. is that sound right mm -hmm. and he uh, Arenal, caught, yeah. caught some rainbow bass and he's infatuated with them i think they've been back four or yeah. five times to do that and yeah they're a hard uh they're a hard fish to get especially on a fly rod like you depending on where you are because they're another one of those fish that people just like to eat like right. they they don't get released you know so to find an area where you can consistently catch you know a lot of them is difficult yeah but um after four years of running around we finally found a place yeah so it's been we're super pumped about that because it's, it's a really cool thing that's a river river scenario or river setting there it's like a lagoon river Nice. type scenario yeah on paddle boards and kayaks yeah so we could it's mostly paddle boards um but then we could do kayak too in yeah. there if people need to i'm kind of new to the uh kayak and paddle board thing i sold my flat skiff and bought a panga for the family and uh -huh. I'm, I'm gonna put kayaks and paddle boards on the uh top of them there dude i'll be honest the the paddle board fishing thing is something that we we started doing right when we opened the guiding business yeah and I was like, dude, we need to get these things because I used to work at, at a place called Travel Country in Altamont Springs, Florida, and we used to sell all the, the boat boards and stuff. Right. And I was like one of the kayak guys. So I was always on them. And I'm like, dude, we have this is the coolest thing. Yeah. And when we got down here, I was like, we we're buying these things and we're going to use them. And sure enough, they're perfect for the rivers and to get up into these these places. Like it's been it's been the best, probably the single best thing I've bought. Nice. for the business being down here for yeah. sure and i guess you could um they make inflatable boards too right so you could yeah, and that's easy what with have, them. yeah 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 so you could we could deflate them throw them in the truck you could leave them inflated and strap them up top um we've we've been in places where going up these jungle creeks there's just like tree after tree after tree and you're constantly just jumping trees yeah like 200 something trees yeah. and just they, they've held up so well it's incredible that's nice it's really use the, the boat brand boards yeah they're inflatable hds and we, yeah. we have had three of them now for about three and a half years and we've used the hell out of them yeah. and, and we haven't had any problems at all so yeah, it'd be kind of be better for me here chasing the redfish than being stuck down in a in a kayak being able to stand up and then jump off pretty easy so exactly and they're so stable like the it's incredible you know i think people might shy away from from getting into that because they think it's going to be hard to stand up or this and that yeah i do and it's not man it's it's a very enjoyable experience and to stand up and sight fish off of it is like it's amazing i was able to go to to belize and fish at at the boathouse there in kyle francis and it was and fish bonefish and stuff off of them and it's just just throw it on the airplane and go huh? yeah nice that's yeah. awesome it is awesome um so it seems like you love costa rica what's uh i've never been there what's the obviously it's got, got an overall great feel to it the food's good the people are friendly yeah, yeah. i mean you could find it's all it's perspective in a lot of ways right yeah. because like you could find problems with anything if you sure. want to yeah um so like and it's and after you're here like as long as i am like you know where to look for problems yeah but for the most part it's beautiful we don't have, we we know where to go where not to go yeah how to interact with people and generally speaking everybody's real friendly and i i'm blessed beyond re recognition bro because my house is like a mile high in the mountains here because we have big mountains up to like twelve thousand feet yeah and i'm a mile high it's sunny 75 like every day it's yeah. You know, and then I could go to the beach and sweat my butt off if I want. But like right now I'm chilling here in my house with like my front doors wide open. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like 
Dude, it's it's awesome. It's, I've been I'm loving it for sure. It's unseasonably cold here now. I think our high today is gonna be 44, and Florida is the same way. Just a, a yeah, brutal, exactly a brutal cold front. Yeah. And right now it's like it's like this year round. We pretty much have like a rainy season and a dry season. Yeah, and that's it. So it's either raining or it's it's just sunny for days on end. Yeah. Um, back to your YouTube channel. Um, you, you obviously tie all all kind of flies. Um, what do you have a favorite style? Do you like tying poppers, crabs? I mean, what do you? What's yeah. your favorite? Man, probably like shrimp flies. To be honest, like I it, the whole fly fishing for me is really funny because like i gotta i gotta give you a, a little backstory too because yeah, i got into fly fishing like in in central florida right after college probably like 2009 2010 around there i started fly fishing again my dad had introduced it to me when i was young and i just was like yeah screw that like i'm gonna catch bass on spinning rods like, yeah and then after college it was like what am i what, what I do, you know? And I started just kicking back to like the things I enjoyed and fly fishing. I remember going into this fly shop Orlando Outfitters and talking with the guys a little bit. And I was, I started getting obsessed with it, dude, but I didn't know anybody that, that fly fished. Yeah. Um, and I, I just assumed that fly, everybody that fly fished tied their own flies for some reason. So when I started fly fishing again, I was like, I got to tie flies. I just what people do. Yeah. And I had bought like a seven weight and I would go fish the Mosquito Lagoon and Indian River for, for redfish and trout and stuff like that. So I start tying flies and, and for years, I didn't know anybody that did it. None of my friends did it. Um, and I was just kind of going at it alone. And it took me a while to like learn everything. Yeah. And just about the, the whole setup because I was just doing it by myself. And then when I got down here, it's sort of when I started really started the backwater fly fishing thing and, and the fly tying at a, at a larger level and putting out videos. And, and that's when I found out I really liked even teaching people about just a little bit I knew about fly fishing because and fly tying specifically, because when I started, I didn't have anybody showing me anything and it was yeah. frustrating. Yeah. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to put start this channel and just show people the stuff I know, you know, yeah. and it sort of just snowballed. And then it got into where I started selling a ton of flies um, and doing custom orders, stuff like that. And that was a big part of my income for a long time. I was a hard I life know, too. Tens of thousands of flies I've tied. Like yeah. it almost got insane. I still do big custom orders all the time, but like it's, it's an amazing thing how it just kind of happened. And, and I kind of came into this whole thing from fly tying and then just in meeting people and stuff and then opening the guiding business and doing so much photo and video work too. It's like, now it's just this crazy whirlwind of like tie flies, guide people, go shoot this content. Yeah. It's like, it's insane, man. And yeah, it's, it's enjoyable though at the end of the day. Yeah. I think I know when a lot of people started myself included, there was even very few books about it, you know, now with, yeah. with YouTube, it's um, like you said, it's helped a lot of people, um, mm -hmm. which, which was, which is great. Um, yeah. And it was cool. I got to do some fly tying nights. I just spent like a month in Florida, um, like the last half of December into, into the first half of January and i got to do some fly tying nights at some fly shops and meet people you know that follow me on youtube or, or instagram or something and, and thank god for social media or freaking none of, nothing i do would be possible you know <laughs> i think it's that's true like for a, a lot of the industry but it's definitely uh it's definitely benefited me and yeah. just to be able to reach people because like sitting down here in the jungle like and it's good to put you know you you know when you're producing something on youtube you know how many people are watching it but it's good to actually see their faces you know and you see a lot of kids in these yeah, nights yeah. too um yeah that's what i've i've noticed it's a lot of you know teenage age kids getting into it which you know they're obviously the youtubers and things like that so for sure for sure well nice it's definitely a good way to connect with people yeah well how um when is your next trip back to the states um let's see i got I think I'm going to, to Guatemala in March, Belize in May. I have some opportunities maybe for work uh, between now and May, two different opportunities. 
um, for video work that probably take me back there in March and in April. Yeah. Um, but other than that, I'm going to be down here on the hustle pretty much nice. all year. Heck yeah. yeah. So what's going on in Guatemala? One of my friends here actually ha that, that has an offshore boat, they just moved their boat up there, um, up the Pacific coast of Guatemala so, to sailfish. Yeah. That's supposed and to be just ridiculous. Good. It's stupid. Like they were sending me cell phone videos and they're like, oh yeah, 30 sailfish in a day, like 40 yeah. sailfish in a day. I'm like, I don't even catch 40 fish in a day, <laughs> right. like any type of fish, you right. know, like weary out. Like, so it's crazy. And they, they offered uh, me and a few friends to come up there and, and fish for a few days. So yeah, you got to do that. I'm really hoping to do that because I, I mean, like I said, just to catch 40 fish in a day, let yeah. alone sailfish is like crazy. Yeah. Uh, so you had mentioned uh mosquito lagoon earlier. That's a pretty technical red fishery. Um, how is yeah, that pretty close to where you grew up? Well, it I when I was starting or in college, I guess in Orlando, yeah, it was about an hour and a half drive to where I'd put put in. And yeah. and at the time, all I had was this like, man, back then it was like a 15-year-old kayak, and I would I couldn't stand up in it. It was like a not a rowing kayak, but it definitely wasn't like a fishing kayak. Right. And I would just take that thing and I would paddle. I can't tell you how many miles and I'd get out wade spots. And, and I didn't have a, I don't even know if I had a cell phone. I, I want to say I did, but I may not have even at this time. Right. And I would just like have Google map, like printouts or something. And I would just be like, I think I'm here. This is that Island. And dude, that's how I did it. And it was just like, it was a crazy fishery back then before right now the water quality has really just gone downhill yeah, yeah but back then you would you would still find a lot of gin clear water and and like giant fish like yeah. in the in the stupidest places one of the biggest redfish i ever caught was in like a drainage ditch <laughs> like right on the side of mosquito lagoon like right. i just got out to take a piss and he was like right there some and of the, the sight fish in those trout that's something we don't we've never seen up here we don't don't get trout nearly right. that big and they definitely don't get that shallow um that's that's one of the harder species i've ever targeted of those bigger mosquito lagoon trout um yeah it's crazy it's there, i'd never i'd never seen anything like that too and, and still i until i started fishing there because in on the west coast of florida we got we have a lot of sea trout but they're small they're like a 20 inch fish is like is awesome yeah but then the lagoon system and, and the Indian River and Mosquito Lagoon systems, they have those giant gator trout that go in there that are 10 pounds, 12 pounds, yeah. like ridiculously big fish. And I've crossed paths with them a few times, you know, and it's it's pretty crazy to hook one. And yeah. then to see to hold one, if if you know anything about sea trout, when you do hold one that big, it just looks ridiculous. Yeah, like you it's not used if, to it because they're not that big. Oh, no, you know, like as long as your arm, you're going, what? Yeah. The first one, one of the first ones I hooked, I saw him like kind of digging and splashing after I hooked him. And I thought it was just a redfish with a ton of spots on it. And then, and, and they're strong when they get that big. Oh, so yeah. it's, it's a pretty crazy experience. And I don't know what it's like now. I assume you could probably still get some big ones, but the water is just, and the grass is dying like crazy in there. Yeah. So I, I don't know. They're going to have, sort of a rough next decade i think getting those water quality issues fixed yeah the red the red tides and the all that so. yeah and there's a lot of runoff from the city there that that sort of doesn't help you know yeah it's like the everglades are getting a they're getting a bad deal too so yeah they're getting did you hard. grow up going down there at all exploring the everglades? Man, i've never really fished the glades much um a lot of my family is from sort of south florida area but we'd fish the keys or we'd fish way farther up north near tampa stuff yeah. like that um never really did we mess around in the glades much um but we never really growing up we always fished out of canoes and stuff and you know I, I think maybe if you have a boat you can access some of those wilder places there are is a lot of opportunities for, for canoes in the glades too but it was just never something we did i guess yeah yeah i guess if you're in florida there's so much variety and opportunity Oh man, it's crazy. For. It's hard to put your finger on crazy. something. Yeah. Seems like it's like that in Costa Rica too. If you, if you had a day off like today, if you were off and the kid and wife were busy, what would you be doing? Right now, this time of year, I would probably be taking the paddleboard down 
the Machaca River and Machaca yeah. fishing for sure. Um, it's a it's about a two hour drive from my house, so I could wake up in the morning and be there and fish all day and drive back. And I like to think of everything here is a two hour drive, like right. nothing's closed. Even though the country is like the size of West Virginia, you just because of the mountains, you can't get anywhere fast. So right. like um that's probably what i would do it's typically what we do if i have a free day yeah that sounds great man mm -hmm. well thanks for talking to us today um yeah of course and, man and look us up when you come back I'll, I'll take you fishing you get back stateside definitely thanks a lot man yes, we'll sir. be in touch man. yeah man tell the family hello i will brother be All easy right. thanks jesse see ya yeah, man.